So now lavender's never been easier to draw. I've just stamped my leaves and drawn a, a few stems. I'll show you what I used for that. I used leaf stamp and I drew some stems and now I'm ready to draw my lavender. Now the lavender is not only a pressure sensitive brush but also a dual color brush. So that really adds depth to this beautiful flower. So if you look at the colors that I chose, I did not just choose one color, I choose the lavender as well as a deep purple so they can complement each other when I make my strokes. So on the first layer, maybe I'll make my lavender flower here. It's got some uh, pressure sensitivity, so I will press a little harder to make it larger. I'm gonna go with a new layer and maybe make one here new layer perhaps one here and also maybe one right here now i like the positioning of these but if i didn't i could since they're on different layers i can move them around a little bit and i do want to add a little interest because they're all similar colors so i'm gonna for one of them maybe i'm going to decrease the brightness and add a little saturation Go to another layer and perhaps for this one or maybe take the hue a little bit more blue or maybe pink or just to mix it up a little bit now i like those colors so i'm going to merge them all and the only thing i don't like now is that the leaves are showing through the lavender so i'm going to duplicate the layer now when you duplicate your layer, you can decide whether you love this new vibrant duplication or whether you want to stay with your original colors. If you want to stay with your original colors, click on the layer beneath the layer you duplicated and turn the brightness all the way up. And then just go ahead and duplicate that layer a couple of times so you have a completely opaque flowers. Your your lavender blossoms and now you don't see the leaves behind them. So pretty and so easy. And sunflowers are a snap too. I'll choose sunflower petals number two. And again, this is a dual color brush. So for my colors, I'm choosing a lighter yellow, like a marigold, and then one with a little bit less saturation. And to make my sunflower, it's as simple as choosing the brush and making a circle, a circular motion, and then holding, not lifting my finger, but then bringing the petals together like this. So simple. If you're not absolutely in love with the shape, if you check up in the middle of your screen it should give you some guidance it should say okay you made an ellipse let's change that ellipse to a circle and i can actually put this one i think i'm going to duplicate it and give it a little bit more vibrance and let's move this one over here i'm still using the snapdragon leaves because i think they're so pretty and i can either repeat this process again on another layer drawing a circle. I'm not lifting my hand. I'm not lifting the apple pencil, but I'll bring in the petals closer. And again, up here, it's calling what I drew an ellipse. So I'm going to choose it a circle. Maybe duplicate this one as well. Merge the layers and move this guy over here. It's not exactly perfect because I see these two petals this petal and this petal are not forming together perfectly, but sometimes imperfect is even more beautiful because it's more realistic. And okay, let's do one more, making a circle with the sunflower leaves, bringing together without lifting my apple pencil and choosing instead of an ellipse, choosing the circle. I'm not gonna duplicate it this time. I'm gonna keep this softer shade but actually since the stem behind it is showing i will duplicate Actually, i think i'm going to merge all of them on one layer and duplicate that layer layer underneath i'm going to choose an adjustment 
hue, saturation, brightness, and bring the brightness all the way up so I can make it a little more opaque if I duplicate that white layer, merging them together. Now you're not going to be able to see the leaves behind that. And now I'm going to make my center. I can either just use a stamp like this to make this sunflower center. Maybe I'll go on a different layer and stamp this out, see how this looks. Maybe let's do, I'll duplicate that over here. A little bit smaller. Maybe a bit bigger now over here. But I can also go on the layer above it and make a clipping mask. And I can darken my brown to give a little texture because at the, the last brush that's in this collection is a, is a texture brush for the flower center. So maybe I'll add some texture to some of these. Very pretty, maybe even a little more texture here just to mix it up. So sunflowers are super easy too. So the same thing is true about making these beautiful, I call them snowball flowers. I've heard them called snowball flowers before, but technically they're called hydrangea. And um, there's another one that also is a snowball-esque that's, I guess it's called viburnum and allium. So we'll make these three flowers right now. It's very simple. Um, all of these flowers are dual colors. So when I go to select my color, you can see that I have not only just selected uh, kind of like a, uh, I would call it a periwinkle blue on the right, but then also a deeper, more saturated gray blue on the left. So that's gonna add some depth to my painting. And I'm gonna select the hydrangea brush. And I guess we can make it about size 21. I have already stamped um, some leaves here and drawn the stem with the stem maker brush. So now I'm just going to begin my hydrangea. And I'm just kind of making a circular shape and then filling in. Now I'm gonna tap a little bit, add some variation. It is very simple, and I'll show you a little trick that I like to do. I like to add another layer, oops, and then go ahead and tap over that one. Because when I do that, I can change the blend mode with Procreate, so I can get some interesting effects. So, like for example, I could change that to multiply and see if maybe I like that look a little bit more just to add some depth and change it up a bit. But so that's how I would use the hydrangea brush and almost exactly the same thing. Oops, let me go ahead and get a new screen for the viburnum, the snowball flower, same process or even allium. Again, the same process, just kind of drawing a circle. And this time I'm gonna go with a little bit different because this brush tends to look um, a little bit, it can like a little bit draw a line. So to avoid that straight line look like that, I'm just kind of mixing it up and filling in this circle shape with different strokes, kind of like little tiny circle strokes all around. And again, I can add a new layer. We like to multiply, so maybe I'll just start out by multiplying this layer. I can either tap to add some depth and details, or I can go round and round like I did before. So these are also some fun brush options. And for the dandelion, very similar. Um, so I'm gonna choose my two colors that I have. 
I'm probably gonna, let's see, have my dandelion brush selected. I've already stamped out some pretty leaves from this collection and I've already drawn my stem. Probably gonna leave my dandelion brush about 38% for this selection. And I am also taking the opacity down to 83% because the dandelion is not an opaque flower. It's kind of, I see it as kind of like a, a little bit of a messy looking flower, but also a mysterious flower. So now when I go to use my brush, I'm making a round circle. I'm gonna go in clockwise direction, but I'm gonna make this circle a little bit tighter. I'm not gonna lift up my fingers until I pull it in as, as tight as I want, but I'm gonna bring it back out a little bit. Cause like I said, this is a, a messier looking flower. And now once I do it, I have this signal at the top. Do I want an ellipse or do I want a circle? I'm gonna choose circle. And now I'm actually, oopsie. I made that circle on the same layer as the, uh, as the stem and the leaves. So let me show you how to get around that. I'm gonna go to my selection tool. I'm gonna freehand my dandelion. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it at the bottom in the middle. They'll give you an option to copy and paste. So I did that and now as you can see, it has gone ahead and pasted to its own layer. So if I want, I can just come back to this original layer, grab it, again with the free hand and remove it from the paper so now they're on two different layers and this one I wanted to be on a different layer because I want to copy it and then I'm gonna hit the arrow at the top right there for the copied layer and I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller and then down at the bottom I'm gonna choose rotate 45 degrees Go to my layers and see how I like the look of that. Here's my layers. I'm gonna combine the layers and I'm gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer, go back up to the arrow, reduce the size to kind of fill in the middle there and rotate. Looking good. Okay, so one more time duplicating that, taking my duplicate layer and reducing the size just to fill in the middle. And I can rotate it if I want. So there's my beautiful dandelion. Very delicate, easy to blow in the wind because it is so delicate. But at the same time, still has its own mysterious beauty. So now I'm gonna go to some of these other brushes that are kind of like you get to decide what they are. All these petal brushes. Petals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They all behave in the same way. They're just different, different shapes. So they're great for playing with. You can choose some pretty colors. Maybe you want to do pinks this time. You have the layer, uh, new layer selected. Again, it's a, oops, that's a little small. <laughs> Let's take that away and go with a larger size. Um, so you can just kind of play with these. I'm keeping my pencil down and bringing them in. Do I like it like this or do I like it like that? I get to decide. So I think for this one, I'm gonna keep them a little bit, mm, there we go, a little bit further apart, going to the middle and I can edit the middle by separating them even a little bit more. And then like I did with the dandelion, I can make my duplicated layer smaller and rotate it so that it kind of fits nicely in the gap there. 
and I can do that as many times as I want. Just very fun. You can make as many layers as you want and you get to play with these beautiful brushes. So now for the center of the flower, I think I want to go with something darker. I think I'll go with a deep dark, dark, dark pink. And I'll choose the flower center stamp. And maybe I'll merge it all onto one layer and then just take it down a little bit. I can still change the size and I can even use the warping tool if this flower looks a little bit too symmetrical to you, a little bit too perfect. You can play around with these brushes and have so much fun.